Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Who oh boy, what a show. Seriously, when it came out back in 2017, it was a major hit for fans, so much to the point where a season 2 was practically inevitable. That said though, some of you may be aware of the Kyoto Animation Fire of 2019, which of course the studio behind the anime series adaptation. This fire and further complications caused by the fire have since kept a second season of Dragon Maid from being made. Well, of course, until recently. That said though, my thoughts go out to all the victims of the fire and families of those victims. However, for better or for worse, the show must go on and season 2 is out. That said though, today I want to present to you several facts about Miss Kobayashi, her Dragon Maid, and the friends they made along the way. So if you do go on to enjoy this video in any way, it would genuinely mean a ton if you leave the video a like as it helps the channel out a ton. And of course, if you have any extra facts to add, definitely let me know in the comments below and also feel free to let me know which among them is your favorite. So the first fact for this video, I want to touch on the second season in general by addressing who is being credited as the director for the season. That being Yasuhiro Takamoto, who unfortunately passed away in the fire I mentioned at the start of the video. They're of course crediting him in this way as a means to pay respect for their fallen co-worker. And personally, I think that's just a classy move. Now the second fact I want to mention regards the character of Fafnir, who if you didn't know is one of my favorite characters in the show for his standoffish nature. That said, his voice actor Daisuke Ono is pretty well known for playing characters like good old Faf. Seeing as in the past he served as the voice actor for Jotaro Kujo from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, who you might remember has a very similar nature to Fafnir. For this next fact, I want to notate to you that Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is a hugely beloved series across the globe. So much so to the point where the series has received several spin-off series and manga. These of course include short manga stories about Kana's daily life and even short animation series with bite-sized stories contained within. So if you do want a little more Dragon Maid in your life, be sure to give these a gander. Now, one thing that Dragon Maid as a whole pushes harder than anything else in Japan, both inside and outside of its own series, is how it approaches being a piece of Japanese LGBTQ plus media. Most notably, the series is on a list of less than 100 anime that approaches queer relationships, with some other notable entries on the list being Yuri on Ice, Banana Fish, and Devilman Crybaby. That said, representation is super important in media. And seeing Dragon Maid serve as a send for the whole of the LGBTQ plus community is super nice in my opinion. Moving swiftly on to fact 5, and let's talk about Toru for a moment. And more specifically, let's talk about her dragon form. Because I'd like to notate to you that her dragon form in specific draws inspiration from European depictions of the mythical beings. With her green body, black wings, and lighter green underbelly. And on the topic of different forms for our characters, let's talk about everybody's favorite bombshell in Quetzalcoatl. Now you might know that in the anime, her alternate form hasn't ever been fully shown to us. However, based on what we can see in the series and the silhouette that we get, she seemingly takes the form of a feathered serpent. Keeping on trend with the forms that we've been talking about, for fact 7 we might as well talk about Elma and her alternate form. Which, much like Quetzalcoatl before, she takes on the shape of a serpent. More specifically, a sea serpent which may be obvious if you've ever taken a good long look at her tail while she's in human form. Now to top off the facts about the characters and their alternate forms, we might as well talk about Kana, who you might note as easily the most innocent character in the show. And of course, her dragon form reflects this in the fact that she takes the appearance of a feathered white dragon with blue eyes. That said, make sure you don't tell Kaiba about this blue-eyed white dragon. For what I'm going to call Fact 10, we should talk about the incredible strength of another character, namely Quetzalcoatl, who has been noted to be by far the most powerful dragon in the series so far since she's a former ex-goddess. And her powers are far beyond Toru and Fafnir in terms of strength and overall powers. However, we're not really explained what those powers fully are. And speaking of Fafnir, if any of you guys have ever seen the series Black Butler, you might have noticed that Faf looks somewhat similar to the character of Sebastian Michaelis from that show. Well, this was somewhat by design, as well as the fact that both Fafnir and Sebastian share Daisuke Ono as a Japanese voice actor. Another interesting fact about Fafnir that you might have noticed but not realized is the fact that among all the dragons in the series, he's the only one to not feature horns whenever he's seen in human form. And add a little extra fact regarding his dragon form is that if you were to measure his height in said form, he would come out to a staggering 20 meters, aka 65 and a half feet tall. And as the last fact about Fafnir to share for now, let's talk about how he attained his dragon form. 
as it's heavily inferred that rather than being born a dragon who later gained the ability to turn human, it's implied that he was actually born human and sometime afterwards was capable of turning into a dragon. So he's kind of like anime Jake Long? Anyway, moving on to fact 14, let's take a moment and talk about Kana, whose name and affinity for electric energy are references to Kana Kamui, who is the patron god of storms in the lore of the Ainu, aka the aboriginal people of northern Japan and parts of Russia. And the place that Kana states as her home, Ushishir Island, also references this as in the same lore it is considered to be a sacred place. Another interesting fact about Kana is that unlike Toru or Alulu who are of the Chaos Faction, or any of the other dragons in the show who are part of other factions, she's actually the only dragon character that does not join any faction as of yet at least. Now for fact 16, I'm gonna hit you with a 2 for 1 on facts. Seeing as you might have noticed that Kana tends to recharge her energy with the power of electricity. However, conversely to her, Alulu uses fire to recharge, specifically by eating the fire just like Natsu Dragneel from Fairy Tail. And the last fact about Kana that I want to mention for this video is that she has been known to be something of a prankster. And as punishment for her prank, she was temporarily exiled to the modern world to reflect on her actions. Which is of course where we find her in the series. Now for fact 18, I want to notate to you that if you read the manga for Dragon Maid first, it may give you a bit of bias when it came time to watch the anime adaptation. That said though, if you did, you probably have discovered that some of the sequences are out of order when compared to the manga. Meaning that several parts of the series are just in different places if you look across the two variants of media. The thing is though, if you watch the anime version and then read the manga, you'll default to the anime version as being the correct one. And of course, if you read the manga first, you'll be thinking the exact opposite of this. Moving on over to fact 19, which regards the original concept for Dragon Maid, the mangaka Cool Kyo and the magazine editor that they met with originally decided on making a boy meets girl romance for the manga, and they even signed off on a contract regarding this. However, when Cool Kyo presented the first chapter of Dragon Maid instead, the editor said it was nothing like what was originally discussed, but the magazine went with it anyway. Ultimately, this was probably the right choice seeing how the popularity of the series has gone well beyond surpassing expectations. Now, for an anime specific fact, I want to notate to you that in Season 1, Episode 2, Toru is shown holding a copy of Suru no Ongeshi, which is a story about a crane that takes on a human form to serve an elderly couple after they save her life. And in that same episode, she even tells Kobayashi not to come into the kitchen while she makes dinner. Which is of course a reference to the fact that the crane in that story told the couple to never enter her room as she made cloth for them to sell. Now for the last facts on this video, I want to notate to you a couple of cool references that are shown to us in episode 3. Namely in episode 3 where Fafnir and Makoto are seen playing a Dark Souls type game during the party. Also at the end of the same episode, Kana plays a game that bears a suspicious resemblance to Mario Kart. I really hope she didn't fall off Rainbow Road too many times. And with that said, that's gonna be the video for now. Definitely let me know which fact among these is your favorite, and if you do have any extras you want to mention, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also, if you did end up enjoying the video in any capacity, it would genuinely mean so much if you leave the video a like, as it helps the channel out more than you can imagine. And hey, if you want to catch more videos like this in the future, feel free to subscribe, as there will be plenty of videos like this coming in the future. Not to mention, I'm also working through a series of weekly videos going through and reviewing Dragon Maid Season 2 episode by episode. You know, in case you're interested in catching any of that. However, for this video at least, I think I'm gonna dip. As always, I hope you stay safe and be bold, and I will talk to you soon. Bye bye